Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today, the text for our sermon, uh, all of the readings, really, the, the, the great theme about all of this is the reliability, the faithfulness of Christ for his people. Um, but that first verse of our gospel reading, in particular, when Jesus says, my father is the vine dresser. And so today we remember that Christ is faithful for us. He feeds us, but even as our epistle reading reminds us, says, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For there are many false prophets. God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Indeed, uh, as as we have used this Easter greeting, and as we do throughout the Easter season, Christ already is indeed risen for us. But today, our gospel reading takes us to before Easter, takes us to John chapter 15. This is before Jesus' passion. He hasn't been arrested yet. He hasn't been beaten. He hasn't had his mock trial, his fake trial. He hasn't been crucified. He hasn't died. The father will give his son over to be crucified. And the son will gladly allow all this to happen. He, the branch of Jesse, the vine of life, will be cut off. He will be cut from the land of the living. He will be trimmed. He will be cut. He'll be buried. And unless a seed is buried, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Our reading today takes place before the disciples see all of that. For us, it's kind of easy to see this and know it because we know what happens at Easter. We know the purpose for all of this. But imagine yourself listening to Jesus and he, he turns his attention to Jerusalem in John 15 and he tells his disciples, my father's a vine dresser. That seems odd, almost strange. What do you mean the father is a vine dresser? Vine dressers do some pretty, well, they do some pretty horrible things to the vine. They cut, they pull, they manipulate the branches. They tie the vine, they bind it together. The vine might think it needs to go this way, the branch might think it needs to go this way, but it is growing into the shadows. It is moving towards certain death, and the vine dresser comes and says, no, this way. But everything the vine dresser does is for the sake of the vine. It's for the sake of the branches. So as Jesus speaks to the disciples today, the immediate context is that he is preparing them for what they're about to witness. They will see the vine dresser at work, and it will look more like vine murder. Because without faith, the suffering, the cross of Christ, and even without faith, the suffering that we're going to endure. In 1 John, the epistle, John warns us. He says, you are going to face suffering because the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, is at work to lead you astray. The world, he says here, has a message. And you're going to suffer if you stand against the message of the world. You're going to be pruned. You're going to have to stand up. But all of this is for your sake, the sake of the vine, the branches. It doesn't look good for Jesus. And yet... He has complete trust in his father. Jesus lived by faith. He had the promise that his father gave to him at his baptism. You are my beloved son. So even as all of this terrible stuff is happening to Jesus, Jesus lives by faith. 
Jesus trusts in his Father, and we hear this for the fifth Sunday in Easter, we go back to this reading to remind us that everything that happened on Good Friday, on Monday, Thursday, everything that happened was not a mistake. It was not a surprise to God. It was not a surprise to Jesus. It looked bad. It sounded bad. It was bad. There was nothing that looked like it was going according to plan. But God knew. And he knew how to be a vine dresser. He knew what needed to happen so that we branches would be saved. That we branches would not be would not try to connect ourselves to the world and the promises of treasures in this life, that we would stay connected to the true vine so that we would be be reminded and know that God knows exactly what he's doing to you when you might be tempted to think he's a vine murderer. No, he's a vine dresser. Because part of tending a vine, if you're a vine dresser worth any salt, today Jesus points out that part of the the job of the vine dresser is identifying the dead branches. The message of Jesus' sermon this morning, like the edge of pruning shears, it has a sharp point to it. Something that maybe we, we don't want to hear, that there are dead branches. There are people who will cut themselves off from the vine. Immediately, of course, we see this fulfilled with Judas, who heard all the preachings of Jesus, heard all his sermons, saw all the miracles, and yet Judas did not return to Christ. There are those who say, well, I don't need to, be, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. I don't need the word. I don't need the body and blood of Jesus. I can find God where I want to find him. Many people do this by absenting themselves from church. All the while, they have no problem going to school, going to work, finding time for leisure activities, children's sports. Where your heart is, there is your treasure. We're all tempted to strive for the treasures of this world. This is why the epistle lesson warns us. Test every spirit. Be on the lookout. The devil doesn't love you. He wants to cut you off from the vine. The dead branches say, I don't need forgiveness. I can grow how I want. I am my own vine. But our Lord mercifully teaches us today like a vine dresser. Today, our Lord teaches us we need to be connected to him in the ways he promises to connect to us. Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. There's no room for rotting branches. The branches, they know what God has commanded. They know not to sin. They know not to gossip. They know not to lose their temper. But instead of repenting, instead of fleeing back to the source of life, who promises to give them and to nourish them, to forgive them their sins, to calm their conscience, to chase away all the evil spirits that plague us night and day. Instead of returning to the vine, they say, no thanks. I don't need forgiveness. I'm not as bad as all those other people. But today, Jesus warns us we must strive. We must be connected to him. And we as Christians, we must strive to improve our lives, to make use of our Savior's generous spirit who walks with us, who cares for us, who will work through you to produce that fruit, that fruit that today Jesus says is is love, joy, peace and patience, goodness, kindness. And of course, not so that we may boast, But as St. Paul reminds us, let let he who boasts, boast in the Lord. To be honest, it's a fearful thing to hear this reading. Because by all standards, there's a lot of dead branches. I don't know a whole lot of branches who can look at their life and say, well, I've produced enough fruit. 
I've done enough to be accepted by God. And maybe you do prioritize the faith. Maybe your, your neighbors who see you going to church, maybe your, your friends who hear you talking about Christ, maybe you do prioritize the faith, maybe you do stay connected to the vine, but yet we still have that sinful flesh, that part of us that wonders, am I still connected? And you see, this is exactly the target of Jesus preaching to his disciples. It's not the self-righteous he has called. Jesus has not come for the healthy, but for the sick. Jesus has come to be the source of life for the branches who say, I need my Savior. He is my life. Jesus is promising us and the disciples that it is his faithfulness. Did you hear that in the gospel? Jesus promised the disciples, he says, you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Today's reading, yes, it has a sharp point to it, but all the more it has a gracious promise of Christ that his word works that his Holy Spirit will strengthen you, forgive you, cleanse you, and make you clean. It's not the fruit that makes the vine, the branches clean, but it is the word. Jesus declared the disciples clean. He's absolved them. And now he says, stay in that forgiveness. Remain in my word. Stay connected to the vine. Do you struggle? Are you bothered by thoughts? Do you find trouble trying to find fulfillment in this life? Well, perhaps you're chasing after the wrong gods. Perhaps you're following the spirit of the Antichrist. How does branches stay on the vine? We abide by receiving from our Lord which means our Lord promises to be with us just as regular branches in a tree don't give to the vine, but the vine gives to the branches. The branches receive, Jesus gives. The way to become a dead branch is to say, no, thank you. I don't really need much from you, God. I'm quite content, to be honest. And it sounds so alien even to our own lives as the vine dresser maybe comes and he moves your branches. He tends them. He moves them from where they think they were comfortable. We branches, we might think we're going in one direction. We think we know how things should be. But your vine dresser knows better. The vine dresser might come and cause some suffering shakes us around. He prunes what we think we've worked so hard to grow. And we think it must be, all, must be all some sort of mistake. The vine dresser doesn't know what he's doing. But your vine dresser knows so much more than you do. Our vine dresser, he knows he may just have to attack that false god that that you hold so tightly onto. That false God that believes that we can judge that if something hurts, then that must mean it's bad. That as people looked at the cross and Jesus suffering and they said, oh, there's no way he could be the savior. My God (laughs) wouldn't do that. But so often the vine dresser knows that you need to be pruned, not to destroy you, but to grow you that we need to be operated on, we need to be moved, we need to be redirected from going into the shadows, and so he does. Our vine dresser knows that sometimes a branch will get infected, sometimes the sin that we wish we could stop, sometimes it needs to be crucified in rather painful ways. And it's pointless to try to figure out our vine dresser. Sometimes he doesn't reveal to us what he's doing. The vine dresser doesn't always come and say, oh, um, may I have your permission to move your branches because you're going in the wrong direction. You're going into the shade. Many times our vine dresser doesn't explain this because he wants you to live by faith. 
the faith and the promise that he gave you in your baptism. He does, he, he, he is sometimes mysterious, but he will always tell you where you stand. He does reveal to us where he does connect to us, where the, where the vine does provide for the branches. He reveals to us what he does in his word. So listen and hear it this morning. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. I am the vine. Whoever abides in me will produce fruit. We are told and comforted by the fact that everything we have and given to us is given to us by Jesus. We may not see the fruit, but God does. Nothing we do comes of our own effort or our choice. It is Jesus. Just as a branch receives from the vine, does not produce on, our, on its own, in the same way, we do not produce. Oh, we may produce fruit that the world loves. The world may accept you and give its approval of you. But on the inside, it's rotten. What we do is abide in Christ. We abide by receiving, by trusting him where he says, my word will cleanse you. He says, abide, and we say, Amen. He gives us his word of promise and baptism, water that literally grafts you into the vine. It's not your effort, but his. And this nourishment continues to flow from his altar in the body and blood of Jesus. So no matter how much you doubt, no matter, no matter how much you wonder if you are a dead branch, God says, fear not. Your sins are forgiven because of my son Jesus. Your sins are buried with my son Jesus in the tomb. And since Christ is risen, so are we. And now that we are grafted and given all good things from him, we welcome the continual pruning. We welcome the suffering that's brought to us by God. But we must not get too preoccupied with looking for the fruit. You'll not always see it. But what does the author of Hebrews says? Let us fix our eyes on Christ, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, endured the cutting, the burning of God's wrath. For he was that branch of Jesse. He was the root. And our Lord uprooted him, pulled him from the land of the living so that you would be grafted in. In Christ Jesus, who himself was cut off, you are joined to that fount of life, that vine. Because today's reading is not about the threat. Today's reading is about the faithfulness of Christ. Whoever abides in me, he will bear much fruit. This is a promise, not a threat. Alleluia, Christ is risen.